Do you have concerns about this? Well, Shari, good afternoon and great to join you as a relatively new Shadow Minister for Education. And uh, absolutely, I have concerns because academic freedom and freedom of speech on university campuses is paramount. It's critical um, for critical thinking, for the progression of ideas and academics which seek to subvert free speech uh, shouldn't be on university campuses, frankly. So while the University of Melbourne has made it clear this is the position of the executive and the council, I am concerned uh, that they may be seeking to influence others, academics and students, which of course runs contrary to freedom of speech and, and that's why I'm speaking out about the importance of the Albanese government safeguarding the very uh, important work of the coalition in protecting free speech in Australian universities. Do you think there is going to be a genuine debate here on university campuses uh, when already, you know, it, it's, it's not considered um, the right thing to do for many people to support the no uh, campaign? So do you think there is, it is going to be even socially acceptable uh, for students who make it clear that they don't agree with the university campus, with the executive's position at Melbourne University? Well, Sherry, all educational institutions have an obligation to teach Australians uh, how to think, not what to think. So there needs to be a discussion uh, in a balanced way of this particular issue. And we've seen four universities come out and support the Yes case, which, as I say, does raise concerns in terms of whether it compromises academic freedom and free speech. Uh, but I also am really concerned about where this could lead because I think there are a number of academics and I have to point out my former university, Monash University, the law faculty has in fact made some statements in relation to The Voice which are demonstrably wrong and it also concerns me that some academics are campaigning rather than teaching. So that's also a concern, Shari. I mean, if some are arguing that there shouldn't be a debate at all, then why have a referendum? You know, why not just introduce the legislation? The point is the Albanese government does want there to be uh, discussion and debate among Australian citizens. Well, it does, except uh, we're very concerned about the way the Albanese government is going about this. Of course, we know uh, that it doesn't want a proper debate in relation to funding both the yes and no cases, and it took quite a battle to encourage the Albanese government to produce a pamphlet. But, Sherry, look, I just want to point out something that's really concerning, and I'm looking at something published by Monash University on the 27th of February. Yes. It's, a, it's, a, it's a debunking ten myths, and one of them talks about how um, any representations made by, made by The Voice would not be subject to any court challenge. This is because the courts have always been reluctant to interfere with the internal workings of Parliament. Now, that's demonstrably wrong. Even the Attorney-General, Mark Dreyfus, has said that, of course, The Voice uh, um, can be challenged by in the High Court, and that's normal with any constitutional provision, particularly any change to our constitution. So it does concern me that... Uh, there are a number of academics who are quite improperly campaigning uh, rather than teaching both sides of the argument. But let me just commend Universities Australia, which has not mm. expressed a position, and I think that's the right and proper thing to do. All right, Sarah Henderson, thank you for joining me this evening.